Hey y'all, today we'll be doing the May June 2023 Unit 1 Paper 2 for MOB. Keep, let's get into it. Module 1 Business and its Environment. George Enish owns and operates Classic Furnishing, a small furniture store on the Caribbean island of Liberation. The store specializes in the manufacture of various types of home and business furniture. Demand for the products have been steadily increasing and as a result, Mr. Enish is planning to expand the production of furniture. This will require the purchase of new machinery. It is also important to increase efficiency since the new trade liberalization policies have caused an influx of furniture manufacturing firms into the island. Additionally, the government has also created policies to protect local manufacturers. 1A wants us to define the term trade liberalization. Trade liberalization is a policy or set of policies implemented by governments or in a national organization to reduce or remove trade barriers between countries. Part B wants us to describe the type of economic activity in which classic furnishings is engaged. Classic furnishings is engaged in an economic activity of manufacturing. The company's focus on producing furniture indicates its role in the secondary sector of the economy, where it transforms raw materials into finished products. Part C explain three factors that could influence Mr. Ennis' decision to purchase machinery. Firstly, the competitive environment plays a crucial role in his decision-making process. With the influx of furniture manufacturing firms due to trade liberalization policies, Mr. Ennis must assess his company's ability to remain competitive. The new machinery should meet the current demand and position classic furnishings as a strong player in the market. Secondly, government policies and regulations designed to protect local manufacturers are pivotal factors. Mr. Ennis needs to thoroughly evaluate the potential impact of these policies on his business. If these policies provide incentives or subsidies for purchasing locally, manufactured machinery, it could significantly reduce the financial burden of acquiring new equipment. Also, if there are restrictions on importing machinery, he may need to consider choosing machinery that complies with these regulations. If there are stringent quality standards that his machinery must meet, he may also need to tailor his selection accordingly. Lastly, the long-term sustainability and scalability of the chosen machinery are crucial factors. Furniture manufacturing is a capital-intensive industry and any investment in machinery signif signifies a substantial allocation of our resources. Mr. Ennis should assess how well the new machinery aligns with his long-term business goals. Part D discuss three positive impacts of globalization on classic furnishings. Firstly, globalization has opened up new markets and expanded the customer base for classic furnishings. With the advent of e-commerce and international trade agreements, the store can reach customers beyond its local market, increasing sales potential and reducing the risk of relying solely on the domestic market. By exporting furniture products to international markets, classic furnishings can diversify its revenue streams and achieve a more stable financial position. Secondly, globalization has facilitated access to a broader range of resources and technologies for classic furnishings. As George Ennis seeks to expand production and increase efficiency, the store can benefit from global supply chains for raw materials and access to, to state-of-the-art machinery and manufacturing technologies. These advantages enable classic furnish furniture to produce high-quality furniture more efficiently, meeting the growing demand and staying competitive with the influx of new furniture manufacturers on island. 
Lastly, globalization has opened doors for classic furnishings to establish strategic partnerships and collaborations, further enhancing its growth and competitiveness in the international market. To comply with government policies protecting local manufacturers, the stoke and form alliances with international companies experienced in navigating global markets. These partnerships can provide valuable insights, expertise, and access to distribution networks that can help classic furnishings adapt to the changing economic environment and thrive in the face of increased competition. Module 2 Management of People Ela Mode is a small business that sells fashionable male and female clothing for the upscale market on the Caribbean island of Cartier. Janet Johnson is a new owner and manager and she wants all the workers to perform at a high level to ensure that the organization becomes very successful in a short period of time. She met with the staff to share a vision for the firm and explained to them how they could help the organization achieve it. In addition, Janet listened to her com to their complaints about the previous owner or manager. He did not care that they were struggling financially and they felt unsafe on the job at times. Janet assured the workers that she would change that by responding to their psychological and safety needs. 2A, define each of the following concepts as it relates to Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory, psychological needs. In the context of Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory, psychological needs are the basic requirements individuals must satisfy to maintain their physical well-being and survival, including food, water, shelter, clothing, and adequate rest. Safety and security needs. Safety and security needs, according to Maslow's hierarchy, are the second level of human needs after psychological after psychological ones. These needs encompass physical safety as well as emotional and psychological security. Part B, expenditure compensation benefits that Janet Johnson could offer her workers to help satisfy their psychological needs. Firstly, Janet could establish a competitive salary structure to ensure employees can afford necessities such as food, housing, and transportation. This action addresses the fundamental psychological need for financial security reducing financial stress and allowing our employees to focus on their work more efficiently. Additionally, Janet could introduce a comprehensive health insurance plan as part of the comprehensive package. Access to quality healthcare can help employees meet their psychological needs for safety and health, knowing that their health insurance covers them in case of illness or injury alleviate anxiety and improve overall well-being also she could provide a meal allowance or on-site catering services to ensure her employees can enjoy nutritious meals during their work day this benefit fulfills their psychological need for sustenance and promotes a healthier lifestyle increasing their overall job satisfaction and productivity by addressing these psychological needs through compensation benefits, Janet can create a more stable and contented workforce, better position to contribute to the success of a la mode in cartel. Part C, the workers consider Janet Johnson to be a transformational leader. Discuss three of Janet Johnson's behavior that would give the workers that view of her. Janet Johnson's leadership at Ela Moore has been transformational. Thanks to several significant behaviors she has demonstrated in her role, as noted by the employees. Firstly, she actively engages with her staff and communicates a clear vision for the organization's success. Transformational leaders are known for their ability to inspire and motivate their teams by articulating a compelling vision. Janet has demonstrated this by actively engaging 
with her staff and communicating her vision for the company. Through her active engagement and clear communication, Janet provides them with a sense of purpose and direction, fostering a shared commitment to the company's growth and success. This behavior fosters a sense of trust and unity among the workers, making them more willing to work or go the extra mile to achieve the organization's goals. Secondly, Janet's willingness to listen to her employees' concerns and address their needs set her apart as a transformational leader by acknowledging the workers' complaints about the previous owner or manager's indifference to their financial struggle and safety concerns Janet displayed empathy for her work for workers and employees' well-being. Janet's commitment to addressing her employees' psychological and safety needs demonstrates her dedication to the to their welfare, in line with the characteristics of transformational leaders who create a supportive and nurturing work environment. This behavior enhances employees' morale and trust in her leadership, fostering a supportive work environment. Lastly, Janet's promise to take action and make necessary changes to improve work conditions and safety concerns reflects her commitment to personal development and growth for herself and her team. Transformational leaders often inspire and challenge their employees to reach their full potential, and Janet's proactive measure or approach to addressing these issues demonstrates her commitment to continuous improvement. By promising to rectify the previous shortcomings, she shows her dedication to create a positive work environment where employees can excel personally and professionally. Module 3 Business, Finance and Accounting Winsome Campbell, the owner and operator of Campbell's Chemicals and Supplies, recently dismissed her accountant because of transactions that were found to be fraudulent. She has decided to manage the accounting function alone. She begins the process by examining her cash flow statements and all other related financial statements. 3A Define the term cash flow. Cash flow, also known as a statement of cash flows, is a vital financial document that provides a comprehensive overview of the company's cash inflows and outflows during a specific period. The two advantages that Campbell's chemicals and supplies may derive from generating a cash flow statement. The cash flow statement offers Winsome Campbell the advantages of improving, of improved, sorry, improved liquidity management and a clearer understanding of a company's cash generating abilities. B. Describe one way in which each of the following stakeholders could find the financial statements of Campbell's chemicals and supplies useful. We are the creditors. Creditors such as suppliers or lenders have a vested interest in the financial health of Campbell's chemicals and supplies. They rely on financial statements to assess the company's creditworthiness and ability to meet financial obligations. For creditors, the financial statements provide essential information on the company's liquidity and solvency. Managers. The financial statements are a crucial tool for Campbell's chemicals and supplies managers to assess the company's financial performance and make informed decisions. The cash flow statements in particular help managers monitor the company's cash inflows and outflows, allowing them to plan for working capital needs, invest in growth opportunities, and ensure enough liquidity to cover short-term obligations. Part C, table 1 below shows the account balances for Canvas chemicals and supplies for the year ending the 31st of May 2023. This is the table guys. Prepare the trading and, prof trading and profit and loss account for Canvas chemicals and supplies for the year ending the 1st of May 2023. And that is for 15 marks. So we have... We have this, we have the company name as the heading, Cam Campbell's Chemicals and Supplies, Trade and Profit and Loss Account for the year ended the 31st of May 2023. We have sales in the sales column, we have $760,000 guys, then we got a 
less the cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold will be opening stock plus purchases, which will give it a cost of goods available to be sold. Less the closing stock, and when we do that, we get the cost of goods sold. And we subtract that from the sales, giving us a value of 523000 then we have our expenses, we have rent, electricity, advertising, depreciation of motor vehicles, um, sundry expenses, and that will give us a total of 280100 as operating expenses. Subtracting the operating expenses from the gross profit will give us an answer, well, will give us a net profit before tax of 240900 but we also have to add profit on the sale of the plant, which will give us a net profit after tax of 256,900. And that is it for 15 marks. Let's go back to this. And this are the, this, is, this is the figures for each, each account balances, guys. And that's it. See you all next time.